entrepreneurship for me is about freedom of expression, you know, of your ideas. And for me, you know, someone to be able to come to me and say, hey, I want to do X, you know, I want to design this, I want to make this, and I can help them. Or they say, hey, I want to join you, I want a job doing X, Y, Z, and I have the resources and capital to bring that person on. So all the people from my community that want an opportunity for entrepreneurship, now nah, I can actually give them an opportunity or at least help them to get it. I was born in the UK, um, but both of my parents were born and bred in Nigeria um, and arguably one of the best tribes, um, the Edo tribe. Um, obviously, that's arguable by that. Um, I've been there twice um, and the experiences of kind of going there and seeing people hustling from a very young age and the perseverance and being resourceful um, ultimately helped to mold me into the person I am today. Um, so I grew up in South London myself, um, in Peckham, again, arguably one of the, the best areas. Um, and I went to a state school called Kingsdale Foundation School, which was in Dulwich, right by a private school, actually. And I feel um, that always gave me that inner drive that I think I could beat these guys. You know what I mean? If I really go for it, I was competing with myself, but I thought like I could be on a similar level, even though I wasn't, I didn't have all the social capital. Um, so I kind of went from that point um, around year nine, I had a transition um, where my brother, um, Kenny, um, went and was in prison for murder and a few other charges. Um, and at that time, I had to make a decision. What, what am I going to do with my life? My mom didn't come to the UK um, just for vibes. You know what I mean? She came to make a I live and make a difference, leave a legacy. And I felt that it was now my time to step up. So I'd go to see him every single Saturday. Um, and that was my fuel for making change because I saw that that way of life, even if you're not guilty, you can still get caught up in that situation. And luckily enough, he was acquitted halfway through the trial, but that fire kept burning because I knew so many other people were going through the similar um, situation. And at that time, in terms of what I was putting that, flew into that was the fixing bikes in my local community that's what I love doing um, and then that's where the kind of passion for engineering came because I realized I would love to actually be on the side of being a builder and making some of these things and not just fixing them um, and I also kind of had a passion for um, go-karting at the time um, so I kind of said hey if I can't be a racer and and kind of you know, be in the cars, then I'll be on the other side and build it. So I did engineering at GCSE. I knew I wanted to do engineering at university. So long story short, I did all the sciences um, and maths at A-levels. Um, and then I went to UCR to study mechanical engineering with programming, like yourself at UCR. Um, and then now I'm 24, my birthday just gone. Um, and, you know, just work in corporate spaces for just over six years, I guess, as a technologist, engineer. Um, that's what I am at heart. Um, but I've also explored consulting, banking, in kind of the UK and in the US, like yourself, um, at companies like Google, Rolls Royce, um, JP Morgan, BCG. So I've just loved kind of building stuff. And I thought going to those companies would help give me some of best practice whilst I was building Motives, which was founded in 2015. Um, so that was just before I got to UCL. Um, I could find that with Moise um, and we kind of work with employers and local government to help young people from underrepresented backgrounds um, get jobs in STEM and beyond. We do that through programs, one-to-one um, -one coaching. Um, and yeah, we just love serving and helping people. Um, and, you know, when I got the call, to kind of join Lewis Hamilton um, on the board. It just made sense to do that at a larger scale. Um, and then now I also kind of do that as like a trailblazer myself, just through motorsport with the X44 team. So yeah, that's me in a nutshell. So if I was to describe myself in two words, humanitarian engineer.
um, which means I love people, I care about people, and I'm ultimately doing engineering and entrepreneurship and everything else just in order to make sure I leave the world better than I found it and people better than they were before. How peer pressure, the, the role of peer pressure and, and the sort of culture at your school may mm. have hampered you from, from forging your own path and, and um, you know, and dreaming big. You know, what, yeah. what, what kind of, what, what, what did you do to overcome those sorts of challenges? So there was a lot of forces um, against me, you know, teachers being one of the forces, some of them were bad vibes. Um, not, not all of them believe in you, um, especially in like a, in like a state school, um, where they haven't seen people excel that much and they're going based on the prediction of the past, um, and how people have kind of come from the past, which I, I understand, but you can't base the future on, on the past every single time. There's going to be anomalies that come through each and every time. You just can't call it, um, so for me, in terms of peer pressure, it wasn't, that wasn't too big for me within school. Um, I didn't have, it was mostly outside school um, in terms of being, you know, I was around drug abuse, alcohol abuse, people doing all sorts, you know what I mean, around me. So it was more like, hey, do you go and get that quick money or do you go for the long-term approach of academia, which I had not seen anyone do um successfully um I was the first of my friendship group to go to university I say the first I'm the first and only um to go to university so you kind of get some context of it wasn't really a route that people aspired to go down um so for me kind of at university it was choosing I mean at school at the time it was choosing between do I want to go through this long journey of doing my GCSEs, my A-levels in university and hopefully getting a job or creating a job or something like that? I didn't know what I wanted to do at the time. Um, that's so opaque. Or do I go for something that's very clear, very tangible now? Um, and I decided to go and risk it, in my view. Um, and yeah, just say, let me try this education thing, especially when Kenny went to prison because I was like, man, it's a it's a losing game if I am kind of going to go down that route because I don't know how it's going to turn out um but I need to try something different and that was kind of my perspective so I'll say peer pressure was more like which side do you decide you want to be on um and I, I just said I wanted to be on the right side of history um and at least try something um and if it didn't work fine but at least I know I tried um, and what motivated me the most was I knew I could get something called the Suffolk Scholarship, um, which would pay my whole tuition of 36k. And if someone's going to give you 36,000 to go somewhere, uh, I think that's worth it. it. It made sense. The numbers added up, you know what I mean? So I had something tangible to chase, even though it was a few years ahead. Um, it made sense for me to go for it and successfully I, I got that. There are so many things you can do as an aspiring entrepreneur um, to kind of build out um, a kind of startup. I would say the first thing, because most people just don't start, is the truth, right? A lot of people don't start. Um, so for those people, I would say get skin in the game. Like that is the key thing. Just just do something, you know what I mean? Sometimes that might mean going to an event, you know what I mean, where you kind of meet people um, in the space that you're trying to go into. So let's say you're trying to build like a healthcare startup, go into a healthcare event um, and kind of understanding these kind of people, what they care about, what they talk about, what they're reading, what they're seeing. So that you can also do the same thing and start to build that repository of kind of information. Um, I would say that's one thing, skin in the game. And it just means creating and doing things ideally, not just going to events, but I think events is how you start. Um, but you take it from events to once you get information, 
and you take it and you make some action whether that's a newsletter you just start with the smallest thing you know the there's a whole concept um, of the lean startup and uh, minimal viable products and and stuff like that which you can just learn from reading the book by Eric Rice on the lean startup um, but I would say that's the first thing just getting some skin in the game and not think not building this idea of this whole castle in your head because as soon as you've done that fear starts to creep in um, and once fear starts to creep in which is not real it doesn't it's just in your head your brain's just trying to protect you because it's just it's not designed to help you be successful it's designed to keep you safe uh, once you've built up this crazy blueprint of what you think things should be like um, it just becomes harder to achieve so I would say for most products you can just go out there and test the smallest thing and if it's not crappy once you kind of release it um you know whether it's a news that or whatnot you've done something kind of wrong like there should be some errors of it shouldn't be perfect unless you wasted time and you should have just got some feedback and, and come back and you can do that in a closed loop you don't have to share it with the world you just need to have like 10 people or whatnot that you trust for feedback and maybe some anonymous people as well um so i say that's the first thing getting some skin in the game um another thing i would say is the importance of research so a lot of people just don't do their research at all um we definitely didn't i was i was completely guilty of that um because a lot of times things have been done before you um you're not the first to build out that solution someone else has done it in some way shape or form or another and it's only through researching and seeing what is currently out there that you can develop your niche of what you want to focus on. It took motives years to figure out what should we be focusing on. We started off with using events as a vehicle um, and now we're all the way to STEM being our niche. You know what I mean? But it took trial and error. That's why I say skin in the game because we couldn't have known that in the beginning. So you're never going to have your solution in the beginning. Your first product is going to be crap. Um, so that's why you just have to get something in the game um, and continue researching so that you can develop your niche or whatever that should be, because you can't help everyone as much as you want to. Um, initially, you want to save everyone and do everything with everyone. You can't. Um, and it's much better that you find a particular target customer, a user persona, and support, add as much value to them as possible. Even if it's 10 people, 20 people, um, you'll get a loyal tribe that will then share that kind of product or service with other people. Um, and you'll just grow organically from there. Um, and then it's a case of marketing and, and all of that. So maybe I can kind of give six things which lead on from like the last question kind of. Um, so I'd say the first is watch study and like in you know, a study your market and find your like find an ideal target right that's the first thing um the second thing is focus on your speed to the market right now it's not just necessarily um big companies taking out the small companies it's more, more like who can do things the fastest as you can see clubhouse they got like they went in and then there's so many other big companies coming in but if they can continue to do things fast maybe they might win and build more trust um the third thing I would say is people don't buy like your product, they buy your kind of stories. So that's why empathy is important because you need to be able to communicate with their emotions and win their hearts and minds. You can't just win their minds. People make emotional decisions when they're buying things or you know whatever it may be. Um, the fourth thing I would say is like money follows attention. Um, so get the attention by being an original, be you. Like I still keep my bed, even though the company say clean shaven. I still, I just me, keep the attention, keep posting on LinkedIn when you have a milestone or you're documenting your journey, whatever it is, stay visible. Um, and then I would say, yeah, it kind of links to the next point, which is use your gift to like create content. Whether that's a podcast, um, video, writing, um, and just do it as frequently as possible and find ways to multiply that attention. Um, whether you dice up into short clips, I like Instagram stories, so I just put everything out like that. Um, but even me, I'm thinking about better and newer ways of, of kind of doing that. Um, 
And the reason for that is your customer needs to hear your message. Um, and they say at least seven times before they'll take action to buy your product or your service. That's seven times. So you have to, you have to be posting and getting to them every week if you can, um, whatever the content may be, however dense. And I think last but not least, um, which hopefully should put people at ease and definitely what we did with motives and everything else is copy until you become. Look at your established competitors, the people that are innovating in the market and have much more money than you have. Um, ask questions, as I said, about the food and everything else. And don't let your pride kind of hinder you. Um, and yeah, I kind of think the bonus is like this, be resourceful. Um, so what are you doing with the resources that you currently have around you? Um, because you have everything you need in order to get to that next step. Um, and I know that because I grew up on the couch um, doing my GCSEs, um, never had a bed, and I still managed to make so much happen. Um, so I think entrepreneurship, if you don't give up and you persevere, it's, it's possible to make something of it. What made you dare to dream? I prepared for the worst case, um, but like um, I think as you kind of do that, um, the reason why I prepare for the worst case is because it can happen. Um, but a lot of times when you prepare for, and you think about the worst case, you're consumed with fear. And sometimes you sabotage yourself with fear. And as I said before, your brain's hardwired to keep you safe. It's not for success, um, even though it's not real. Um, and how do you get over it? I think you get over it by dreaming about what you can be if it does happen. Um, so that's what helped me there to dream, thinking about what I can be, um, what things could look like if I if I went for it, if I went for this humanitarian dream of changing the world, um, you know what I mean, through products and services and improving people's quality of life like across the world, maybe it can happen. Um, and it's only people that dare to dream that really go and make it big.